committee meeting, Thursday, December 19th. Uh, like to wish uh, one and all happy holidays. Um, tonight's meeting is being um, broadcast by the local media present. If there is anyone wishing to make a rebroadcast, uh, please let myself or one of the other uh, committee members know. Uh, first agenda item this evening is approval of minutes. We do have um, minutes from the November 21st regular school committee, committee meeting as well as the executive session. Has everyone had a chance to review those? Mm -hmm. I have a motion from Joe, second from Don. All in favor? Unanimous in favor. Next up, we have announcements, correspondence, and distributions. Do any members have anything? Scott? Uh, it is, uh, it's certainly holiday concert time again. So uh, I've had an opportunity to, uh, to attend uh, a couple of the different schools, uh, different music programs that we've seen over the time, over the, uh, the last couple of weeks or so, and you know, never ceases to impress me with the, with the talent is that we have in this town um, of our students and, and, and uh, the effort that the music department and all of our faculty and staff put into it. Um, everything from not just the music department either. You know, the music department does an amazing job and works certainly very hard on it. But then uh, I had an opportunity to attend the Woodland Holiday Concert, and uh, apparently they've created their own little staff group as well. So it's good to see Mr. Consigli and uh, Mrs. Kincaid out there uh, right on stage also performing along with a number of the faculty and staff members. So it's great to see everybody get involved. The kids are having a great time, and just you know, thank you to the music department as well as to, uh, to all the parents and the, and the students for, for their great job and, and great participation. Great. Thank you, Scott. Bonnie? Kuna Wall, and uh, this year they had the band, uh, members of the band playing up on the, uh, the loft, and we had the different classes uh, running fundraisers and a lot of activity in the lobby. It was great. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Yep, I just wanted to uh, announce also the uh, Nature's Classroom trip this year. We had a different venue um, instead of going out to uh, Connecticut. It was out in Massachusetts and uh, in Charlton. And I had a chance to go out and visit with the kids for a good part of a day out there, and they had a great time. Wanted to stay longer. I'm sure the parents were itching to have them home sooner, <laughs> uh, but for that full five days, they just had a great experience. And just a, a great report from uh, Nature's Classroom too. Yeah, it's great. How was the weather that way? Uh, it was cold, you know, yeah. but they. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot of snow, a lot of ice. Yeah, uh, yeah. They they did well. They. Uh, and they were outside, and I thought the classes might have been indoors. Uh, no, I as I was walking <laughs> on the campus, this, everything's outside and. It's just another day. Yep. It just happens to be cold yep. and snowy. Yep. Good. I also wanted to just acknowledge this evening to say thank you. Uh, I reminded the committee in some meetings past, we're a little late in getting into this phasing, but we're trying to improve the, uh, the quality of the TRC. The Teachers Resource Center where the committee meets is effectively an annex to the Milford TV. Um, uh, Rob O'Keefe, who's here and, and does these pr uh, productions, it's a, it's a great studio if you haven't seen it on South Main Street. Uh, and this is much like uh, with the Town Hall Selectman's uh, room. Our room here is an annex to that where the meetings are broadcast. So you may see that we've made some upgrades this evening. We've moved away from, uh, we've gone from paper, we've gone to uh, technology using laptops, which could have been very distracting. They were pretty dated, actually. Uh, we now have um, tablets to use. And this is just to make it clear that we didn't take money away or opportunities away from children to do that. We didn't use taxpayer dollars. This is money coming from cable subscriptions through Verizon Comcast that's channeled through uh, through Milford TV and the Cable Advisory Committee for the purpose of upgrading this facility. The next step you'll see in this room uh, will be the wires that are on the floor here and these cameras will be robotic cameras in the ceiling, uh, much like a town hall. Mm -hmm. And that will take away some of the distractibility that we have in the room. So these are all efforts just to improve um, how we uh, communicate with the, with, the, with the town and uh, Want to just put that out there and to say thank you to Milford TV and to the Cable Advisory Committee. Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Patrick. <coughs> Bob, I can't, <coughs> I can't emphasize enough what a great impact Milford TV has had um, on our community and our ability to really broadcast a lot of the, these events. And you know, Rob should be thanked for all of his hard work. Yes. I know that he and his team are at all of our meetings and at all the selectmen's meetings, and and they put in a lot of time. And the quality is fantastic, and the broadcast quality is great, and the sound always works. Um, our meetings are up on YouTube. I don't know why anyone want to watch us on YouTube, but they're up there every <laughs> week. So uh, they just do a tremendous job, and, and they really are. They've been a huge bonus uh, to this community, to the town in general. They do a great service. 
Excellent. Thanks. Excellent. Good job, Rob. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. I think it was just going to surprise me to think about it when I first got elected. They could still pay me. Yeah. <laughs> you and I had convinced everybody to so switch it over to laptops, and it didn't go easy. <laughs> no, it didn't. And we saved a lot of paper in the process, although there's a stack of warrants next to you that <laughs> would make me think otherwise. We can't make that electronic. Yeah. It's <laughs> Very good. Next up, we have invitation to speak. Is there anyone here for invitation to speak? Yes, come on up. Good evening. Good evening, thank you. Um, I'm not sure if you're actually doing the link, Oh, actually, we have you on the agenda. Oh, okay. Well, um, <laughs> that's okay. Stay right there. Okay. If, if there's you're no next. one here for invitation <laughs> to speak, um, we'll pass on that and. Then I welcome you. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's quite all right. I guess I'm anxious. You are anxious. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad you're here. <laughs> thank you. I want to thank Superintendent Tremblay and um, school committee members for having me here as a guest this evening. I'm very happy to be here tonight to present gifts to the um, three elementary schools, Brookside Memorial and Woodland, and Stacy Middle School for their support and participation in our Harlem Wizards fundraising event that we had in October this year at Milford High School. This is our second year of hosting the Harlem Wizards at the Milford High School, and our um, school staff and students played a large role in making this event a success by allowing us to have the players visit the schools and meet the children and participating in the game. I'd like to particularly express how grateful we are to Willen's principal, Mr. Consigli. He provided outstanding support for this year's event by pulling the entire staff team together and even held practices. He really wanted to show up the Wizards. Unfortunately, he doesn't know that they have to win anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely gets a gold star. I'd also like to point out how easy it was to work with the school administrators to put this event together and, and coordinating the space and all the needs that we, ne that we needed for that evening. It was nice to show up the night of the event as, to set up and everything that we had communicated was made available to us. And the custodians, I can, can't say enough of how wonderful they are to help us that evening. Last year um, was our first event and um, as a thank you for the, the same school's participation, um, we pr gave each school a monetary gift that was used towards um, from we, what we understand as technology-based items. This year we wanted to thank the schools again all 14 members of the Milford Junior Women's Club decided to give the school's music and arts programs um, a gift to, um, such that every child would be benefited. So without a further ado, um, on, on behalf of the members of the Milford Women, Junior Women's Club, we want to thank you all for your continuing support for our largest fundraiser yet and present these gifts to the schools. So I don't know who would like to take them, but I have a gift for Woodland. Brookside Memorial and Stacy Middle School. Yeah, thank you thank so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was part of the practice. I was running the practice. I was actually an admin team the night of the, uh, the, night of the game. The night of the game, but we, I helped Craig run the practice. With, with yeah, the part of the reason that the team lost could have been the fact that I was the coach. Um, <laughs> now, <laughs> but, I did my, but I did my best to, to <laughs> team morale, and they did a great job. It was a, it was a great night. The kids had a blast there, and, and uh, I just want to say thank you also for, for organizing that for the schools. Yeah. It's like having fun and making money. <laughs> it doesn't get any better. Can, can we uh, take a vote to? Well, before we do, I would like to mention that, um, you know, it was thank you for thanking us, but really we should thank the Milford um, Women's, the Milford Junior Women's Club. And for those of you who sort of drive around town and, and pay attention, you can see that they actually do a lot of good in our community. You know, for example, if you drive by Louisa Lake on that community news board, if, if you need to get some community news up, who would you contact but the Milford Junior Women's Club? So sure. they just do a lot of good in, in our community, and I, I can't thank them enough for their work and for their efforts. Absolutely. And with that, I will motion Mo to accept motion the gifts Patrick, from the Milford Junior Women's Club. Scott, all in favor? <laughs> Unanimous in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up on the agenda, we have Lydia Buckley um, from the Milford High School Foreign uh, Language Department. Good evening, welcome. Hi there, thank you. My name is Lydia 
Good evening. <coughs> well, it's certainly an exciting um, venture. Can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the sure. trip? We're, um, well, last year we started our relationship with Carousel. We hosted students um, from Lyon in France, and we're looking to go back. We're um, ready to go back to um, visit and be hosted by the same French students um, at the French high school with the teachers that we know. It's for February, the week of vacation, and the week after, following suit um, with what the Spanish and the Italian um, teachers do. Great. Members of the committee, Patrick? Um, I, I would like to preface by saying I'm an avowed Francophile, and I'm absolutely in, in support of, <laughs> of the trip. Um, there's one thing I am curious about, though. It's, it seems like um, we're a little bit late here in, in presenting this. So the trip is to be on February 17th. I mean, I'm... Right. I'm of the opinion that many people, if they did not have a passport at this point, couldn't get a passport. Now, I'm not saying that that's an issue that we're having here now, but could you explain a little bit why the timing is so compressed? Sure. We were trying to get our numbers up, um, and we now have 10 students, um, and so it's ready to go through. We're trying to get um, together with another school system to see if we could raise our numbers and reduce our costs. Um, so that's what uh, has delayed um, m me really seeking approval um, for it to go through. Um, uh, however, with the passports, uh, with expedited service, it would be enough time um, to get that to go through. So it's, it's, it's fair to say that, that the, the planning of this wasn't compressed. It was merely the, the communication with the school committee and the official approval that was... Yes. Yeah. Thank you. One chaperone, um, however, we also have, with Carousel, we have guides on... Um, two of the days and we are have a tour manager with us for four days and on top of that um, as I was here for the French teachers who we hosted the French teachers will also be there for us okay and they're considered chaperones by the regulation Bob how many chaperones you have to have legally per we we require I can look at the policy right now we require uh, a number of is it eight to one so I think we meet the we meet with our staffing that's going from here. We meet the requirements. Okay. I, I, we I, I don't know we, how we've factored in the past. How we factored in people from the the host country, and that's that's new to me. But we, we would meet the requirements of, okay. is of the sending discussion. district. Okay, I'll double check that right now. Okay, um, the other time are you doing it with another community? Definitely. No, that okay. did not come through. Oh, um, okay. However, Carousel is working with us and allowing us, the cutoff should have been 15, but with 10, they're letting us go oh, through. Oh, good, good. Yeah. And the students stay with families, correct? Yes. It's not that they're staying in a hotel. They're staying with host families. Yes, as except they did for when one uh, evening in Paris uh -huh. before we head down to Lyon. Okay. Just a quick question. Um, I think this is, a, again, I think it's a great trip. Anytime you have an opportunity for students to go and, expl and experience other countries and other cultures, I think it's, it's wonderful. Um, Obviously, unfortunately, in this day and age, we have uh, all kinds of different uh, societies and, and uh, unfortunately, potential issues. Um, how do we screen the parents and the families that they're going to be going to? I think I will refer Jennifer to that question. Yes, we have um, host family applications that all of the host families are required to fill out, and we do have someone in Lyon who does host family visits. Similar to what we had here with the, um, ho the same applications are filled out, um, in France that were required of the Milford families and the same process takes place that happened here where we have someone go into the home and make sure that it's a safe environment and often in, in um, Europe the teachers know the families very intimately um, so the teachers also we rely on them to say whether or not they recommend this family as a host family um, in this case I think that all of the students will be staying with their host families of the students that came here Okay. So there is a relationship that's already been established between the families uh, and the students. Okay. And for when the students came here, Carousel was wonderful. They met with the families at a convenient time. So we definitely um, were, Carousel worked very well to make sure our families had a spot for the students. And we said to them, just just like they're going to visit us, they're going to they're, they're going to get visited in France as well. So they want to just make sure everything's um, up to par. 
Paris Hilton stands for a company named for the, the Spanish mm-hmm. trip or the Italian trip? No, it is not. No, it's a different, okay. So we've never used the company before for this type of Not for us traveling, no. Okay. Right. And it's, um, I mean, it definitely seems like a great opportunity. I'm sure it's, it's fairly expensive and not everyone can afford the trip. Is there an opportunity for anyone to receive a scholarship or do fundraising if they really want to go but just can't afford to do it? Well, I, I was speaking with our department head, and it's, it's at this point we haven't done fundraisers within the department. Um, I was hoping to, but as we were saying, with the time period coming up awfully fast, I, I have not set about doing the fundraising. The uh, chaperone ratio is uh, just to follow up. It, it, it is eight for students. It's one to eight for students um, in grades three through seven. One chaperone to ten students, grades eight through twelve. So we're in compliance with that. Actually, Great. thank you. Can I, motion? Can I have a motion? Motion to accept. From Mike, second from Don. All in favor? Unanimous in favor. You're on your way. Enjoy Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Safe travels. You're welcome. Yeah. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. My wife's my wife's French grandmother will be thrilled. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, next up, we have uh, Miss Carolyn Bonnock, the principal of Milford High School. Hi, Carrie. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I would like to begin by checking to see if any of our students are in the hallway um, who are going to be sure. recognized tonight. So. Mm-hmm. Um, Edie, if you wouldn't mind checking, we still have a few students that are going to be joining us for recognition tonight. And so, thank you. So while we wait for them, I'd like to begin by talking a little bit about the AP um, Scholar Program and and what that's all about. And um, the College Board has um, different levels of honor and recognition for students who participate in the AP Program based on their achievement on AP exams. And there's, there's multiple levels um, of award, including the AP Scholar Award. That, that's where the process begins. And that's granted to students who receive scores of three or higher on three or more AP exams. After that, there is the AP Scholar with Honor Award that is granted to students who receive an average score of at least 3.25 on all P- AP exams taken and scores of three or higher on four or more of the exams. Next, there is the AP Scholar with Distinction Award, and this is given to students who receive an average score of at least 3.5 on all AP exams taken and scores of three or higher on five or more of the exams. And lastly, there is a National AP Scholar Award, and this is granted to students who receive an average score of at least four on all AP exams taken and scores of four or higher on eight or more of those exams. And this year, um, for the first time, we do have a student who um, fell into that category. Now, for these students that I'm going to um, read to you right now, these students graduated in the class of 2013. And so what will happen is as a junior student, someone might be an AP scholar or an AP scholar with honor, and then they, as they become a senior, they advance. Um, through the ranks of these recognitions. And so the students last year in the class of 2013, we have several students in, in different categories. We have 18 scholars, we have 12 scholars with honor, 11 scholars with distinction, and one national scholar. So I, I will inform you of uh, who those students are. So for the AP scholars in the class of 2013, we have Robert Benjamin, Hannah Brown, Yaroslav Burden, Kevin Castiglione, Margaret Shute, Kelly Cooper, Jocelyn Cravello, Jennifer Gauthier, Lauren Hanna, Coral Henkel, Shannon Hoare, Rachel Levine, Sarah McTiernan, Ciara Murant, Eric Miller, John Miranda, Brendan Pounds, and Nicole Tassino. Next we have the AP Scholar with Honor, Emily Barron, Cody Callahan, Lucas Degala, Diana Gonzalez, Tucker Gustafson, Veronica Lynch, Brandon Morin, James Mullahu, Karen O'Connor, Shannon Smith, Madeline Stepinski, and Julia Tui. Next, we have the AP Scholars with Distinction. 
Kevin Bradley, Matthew Sishu, Jonathan Flatley, Thomas Heifel, Natasha Jacobson, Sarah, <coughs> excuse me, Sarah Lathrop, Melanie Martins, Kristen Pratt, Connor Rosenblatt, Hugo Silva, and Michael Tracy. And lastly, um, our national AP scholar was Natasha Jacobson, who was also recognized as a scholar with distinction. So congratulations to all those students in the class of 2013. That's great. That's and great. next, I am hoping that if all of our uh, students are here for the class of 2015, so that if I may approach the, um, allow the students Please. to come up. Of course. Sure. For our AP scholars, I would like to recognize the following students in the class of 2014. Ivy Luke, when you hear your name, if you'd please come forward. <laughs> Congratulations. Peter Bay. <laughs> Lauren Kiesling. Ian Mickelson, <laughs> Joya Souza, <laughs> Taylor White. Jessica Palatier, <laughs> Emily Schrotman, <laughs> and John Donahue. Next, we have our AP Scholars with Honor, Carlos Chung. <laughs> Daniel Madden. <laughs> and Katie Dan. Next, I would like to move to our students who are commended students in the National Merit Scholarship Program. Each year, students are recognized um, by the College Board through the National Merit Scholarship um, Corporation for their performance on the PSAT exams. And we have four students who scored in the top 5% nationally um, on their PSATs in the fall of 2012. And these four students are being recognized by the College Board for their extraordinary achievement on the PSAT um, in their junior year. These students are Michelle Kenny, <laughs> Joya Souza. Ian Mickelson, <laughs> and Peter Bay. <laughs> we 
also are um, delighted to share with you this evening, um, even though Peter um, can't be with us tonight, um, Rich Pickett-Savo, our athletic director, um, and I were informed that um, Peter Bay has received um, a very um, important distinction from the MIAA. Um, yes, uh, Peter was voted uh, the MIA Male Student Athlete of the Month for the month of November. Um, if, if you look at his stats, so to speak, you'd maybe understand why he's not here tonight because he does uh, quite a few things. Um, Peter is not only an accomplished soccer player, I uh, had the pleasure of watching him for four years. Um, uh, quite a sportsman, uh, to say the least. Uh, someone that was a pleasure to watch. He's uh, uh, number one in his class, in the senior class. Um, he's an accomplished cellist. He uh, does multiple community service activities, including the library, where he, uh, he's a reader. Um, he, his church group last summer, he helped build three chapels in the Dominican Republic. Like, this is a true renaissance man. <laughs> and um, he's probably doing something right now that's, that's good, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but the, um, in my tenure as the athletic director, this is our first um, student athlete of the month. This was generated initially by uh, Coach Asim as a recommendation, uh, very much encouraged by our building principal. Uh, and then uh, Jen Mitchell, his guidance counselor, wrote a tremendous letter of recommendation. It was uh, really heartfelt, very detailed, uh, really brought uh, Peter's personality to life, so to speak. And um, um, we are tickled to death that Peter is honored with this distinction, and I'll make sure to track him down tomorrow to give him a certificate. But uh, Peter Bay, MIA Student Athlete of the Month, uh, Male Student Athlete of the Month for November 2013. I just want to add that um, the, the distinction is, is so noteworthy because the MIAA receives so many nominations, as you can imagine, every month. And this nomination um, for Peter actually began in October um, when Rich reached out to the coaching staff um, about student-athlete um, nominations. And I just want to share with you what Coach Asim um, has, uh, sent to me um, with regard to Peter because that's really what got the ball rolling. Um, for this process because as you can imagine there's lots of paperwork and forms and so forth that need to be submitted but Coach Asim um, did start this process by writing that um, he wrote I would like to see I would like to nominate senior Peter Bay as the athlete of the month Peter demonstrates sportsmanship week after week on and off the field Peter is a person who can take losses without complaint or victory without gloating and treats his opponents with respect as he does his teammates and coaches this is a quality which we all need at times of winning and losing. All players should be proud of their efforts no matter the result, and Peter helps his teammates and those around him realize this every day. And so that, that's what started our process. And then um, Jen Mitchell wrote a beautiful letter of support, and uh, all the paperwork into went into the MIAA, and Rich was informed this week. So congratulations to Peter. Well deserved. One last document. Let me flip this <laughs> for a second. <laughs> I just want to conclude with um, letting uh, letting you know and, and letting the community know that um, these students are extraordinary in the classroom, on the field, on the stage, um, in their um, extracurricular activities and their leadership. And it, it, it's, I marvel at how much they accomplish each and every day. And uh, they're a real tribute um, to, the, to their family, to the school, and to the community. And I just want to add that on top of all that they accomplish day in and day out here at school, they have all been going through the college admissions process. And that, as they will all attest to, is just a whole nother job unto itself. And I'm sure their parents um, can attest to that as well because the, the complexity of the applications um, every year uh, becomes more detailed, the number of essays that are re required by the students, the student resumes that have to be built to accompany all of the applications. So I just wanted to, um, to share with you some of the colleges that this group of students um, are applying to. Boston College, Boston University, Brown, Colgate, Holy Cross, Columbia, Cornell, Dartmouth, Duke, Harvard, MIT, Muhlenberg, Northeastern, Princeton, Rensselaer, Stanford, Syracuse, Tufts, the University of Chicago, 
the University of Hawaii, the University of Massachusetts, and Yale University. And that's just a sampling of the applications that they have out there right now. So congratulations to all of you. It is so well deserved and we're very proud of you. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for being here. Gary, thank you so much. You know, I, I mean, on behalf of the committee, I, I want to say congratulations um, to all of those students as well. Um, you know, th th they are, th those are great examples of just how well the Milford School District is doing, and, and that makes me very proud. So I congratulate all of them. I know it's a lot of hard work, <coughs> and it requires a lot of dedication to reach those kinds of um, achievements. So well done. <coughs> Be great. That'd be Thank great. you, Kevin. Yeah. Perfect. Good idea. Something I never would have achieved. That'd be a photo we could hang on the wall in here on our Facebook page. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. <laughs> absolutely. Um, Carrie's going to come back. I think Carrie has more. She has some more uh, yeah. program update. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they have enough time, like Joe. Just kind of like <laughs> just come off the yeah. off a little bit. Rubs off a little bit. Maybe their homework together or something. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to see if they wanted to do, if they could help me with some of my office work. <laughs> some solve them some problems. But, uh, w w what a great list of schools. Unbelievable. Uh, on that list as well, which That's is impressive. nice to hear. Because I know, you know, we typically get that list. Well, yeah, I think towards the end of the year, we, we the usually yeah. ask that. tuition payment. Be nice to see some of those on there. Wow. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, I don't even make a nice tuition payment. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's going to leave a mark. <laughs> they uh, never ceases to amaze me what our students in Milford are capable of. Absolutely. I, and I don't. Uh, it just blows me away every year. Actually, I think this is the first time we've gotten uh, an explanation that in depth of all the different levels. We've always yeah. been told, mm. you know, who got the awards. I, I really appreciated Carrie taking the time to give us that detail mm -hmm. and to really, I mean, each of those students, it's quite remarkable. I don't think we do enough, and we can believe in we making don't. enough to do enough, to Absolutely do more, not. to really recognize all the great things that happen in this school mm -hmm. that people don't see day to day. No, and, no. And uh, we spend so much time doing that work and to take the time for you, especially for the school committee and for the people who are watching to to really get that sense is, is right. so important. I mean, for uh, Peter Bay, maybe the exception, eight of AP courses, four of, uh, it's, that's crazy. I mean, that's unbelievable. Mm, amazing. When you can really start only taking them when you're a sophomore. Right. Yeah. And, and he was in the block schedule until this year. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. impressive. And, and those are, I mean, that's college level work. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's real work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, oh yeah. That's not. And, and a very, as Rich pointed out, an accomplished cellist, obviously a great athlete. I mean. Good person. Good person. Yeah. Good person. I think that uh, I've not built anything in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never mind. Never mind three chapels. <laughs> it's, it, it really is very, very impressive of what the students are able to accomplish. But I also think that uh, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't recognize the teachers as well. Absolutely. The amount of work yeah. that yeah. they put into this, and I know yeah. it's a group that gen a tends to shy away, and, and are are normally very humble by any type of recognition, maybe the first ones to say, no, 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 it's the kids, it's the kids. Mm. A and it yeah. is, but it's it's a two-way street. It's mm. really, it really is a, col a, a collaboration between the parents, the, uh, the students, and certainly without a lot of hard work from those teachers, the students wouldn't be where they are. So yeah. uh, certainly well-deserved recognition for them as well. That's, this recognition is just as much for them. Yeah, good but point, Scott, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Carrie, can I ask one question before we move on to the program review, and this may be part of it. Um, but there were quite a number of students here. Is this um, larger, typical of years past? Because we've had such a, we last year showed such strides in our AP students, and a and now we have more students taking it, and um, teachers better, teachers are learning <coughs> how to better teach AP courses. So I'm wondering if now we're s seeing some of those rewards in the students being able to perform so well on these exams. So, so in 2012, so mm -hmm. if we go back to that, which was the MIMSI year, that, yes. that was the year we right. had MIMSI, we had 39 okay. scholars 
and in 2013 we have 54. Okay. So, there, there's so we're, we're seeing steadily something. growing. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said earlier, this group of students, we will see them move through the ranks of the, these recognitions mm -hmm. and the current, um, the current um, juniors will uh, also rise up into the, these roles as well. So I think it's great. Yeah, it is. Okay. Great. So great. And, and also to, to provide students with recognition um, for their accomplishments and, and the hard work and the effort that they put into these courses because the students are mm -hmm. really uh, stretching themselves towards um, excellence in, and achievement that will prepare them for the competitive college admissions. You heard the, you know, the roster of the schools mm -hmm. that the students are applying to. They're very selective. Some of those schools only take you know, maybe 15 to 20 percent of the candidates, mm -hmm. some fewer. So it, it's a very, you know, it's a very difficult process to prepare for, to complete all the paperwork, to just to just uh, put yourself in the running as a candidate, and then to actually um, be admitted based on strong credentials that you've worked so hard at in high school. It's truly, a, it's a great honor for the students. So, um, and so, and so the AP program does continue to grow despite the fact that we are uh, no longer with the MIMSI program. We had um, 260 students in 2012 in AP, and that, okay. that was the year. And then last year we had 274. Mm -hmm. And so the, the programs do continue to grow. Um, one of the changes that we did see um, was that in environmental science and statistics, in the MIMSI year, one of the, um, the expectations um, was that there would not be an honors level of those two subjects. So in other words, you would select CP or you would select AP. And there was no um, middle ground there. That, that proved to be challenging for some students to not have the, the, the pre-AP mm -hmm. course, if you will, like so many other AP courses have. There is a, a pre-AP, so students who take, let's say, US history, um, advanced placement, Almost all of those students are in um, U.S. Honors one before they, they go into the AP U.S. level. So the sophomores, we have a cohort of sophomores that have gone directly from world to AP U.S. We have about 25 students doing that. That's a pretty big leap because there's no pre, there's been no prerequisite. Um, when students go into um, the, the calculus courses, they have honors pre-calc, which is considered a pre-AP and so forth. And so that's one of the differences that we we now have an honors level in environmental science and statistics. And so that has um, brought those numbers down a little bit in those two subject areas. So that, that's really where I see um, one of the bigger changes as far as mm -hmm. enrollment. But student enrollment and scores continue to climb. Yeah. Um, the qualifying scores in 2012 were 149 the um, 149 students, and in 2013 it was 161. Out of how many tests taken? Out of, we had 400, in 2012 we had 452 <coughs> exams. Okay. And in 2013 we had 429 exams. So <coughs> we did see that, it's about 23 fewer exams. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason for that is up for debate. One, one could argue that because in 2012, um, MIMSI paid for half of the exams okay. for the students, and in 2013 there was no, right. and you know. The cost of exams is? For, well, in the MIMSI year it was, this, this year, $89 for the, these. For one exam. For one exam. Yeah. And so when we had MIMSI, it was subsidized, um, the students paid forty three fifty that year mm -hmm. um, for those subjects. In English, math, and science, because it, it, remember that it's only those disciplines, mm -hmm. the, the other history and um, foreign language and music and so forth weren't part of that. So, so th that could be, you know, the financing uh, of it um, can be challenging. Um, it's an expectation that students would take the AP exam if they enroll in the course, not only on our end, but on the college's end, um, because it, it's, in, well, first and foremost, it's that indicator of college and career readiness, but also if the student fares well and meets the college's expectations, they can be granted um, advanced standing or college credits mm -hmm. and so forth, depending upon the college's um, policy. So, but not all, the majority of students take the exam, but not all. This year, with an $89, Per exam fee, yeah. it's you know that that's a substantial amount of money for a number of our students. We have some students taking five APs this year, mm. so it's it's yeah. it's a lot. Yeah, John, it's a lot of money. is the qualifying mark a three? The qualifying mark it, is a three by and large. However, colleges and universities can dictate 
th their own um, requirements. Um, but if you looked at um, UMass Amherst, for example, the qu a qualifying score of a three is, um, is a score that they will accept for most of their courses, not all, but most. And in one of them, the, um, I think it's, it's the physics um, B, they, give, um, they will give a student um, double the amount of credits at UMass Amherst for a qualifying score. So a student could actually enter with six credits if they get a qualifying score and on that. But every school. So I, so I do have a question on, um, so you said there's about 114 qualifying. What I'd like, what I'd really be interested in seeing is per AP class, how many kids are receiving threes or fours? We saw that last year, some of that data per subject. Yeah, yeah. per subject. Yeah, we saw that some of that yeah. last year. It was I'd, just with really the telling. New uh, data, I'd love to see, see how it breaks out per class. So w what I have tonight that I could share with you that goes in that direction, and I can um, break it down further, but I do have the percents of qualifying scores for each subject last year. So mm -hmm. in other words, in US history, 61% of the students received a qualifying score. Okay. So I do have that um, okay. to yep. share with you tonight. Yeah, that's right. um, in psychology, and, and I also have the numbers. So we had 57 students in US history last year in and with a 61%. In psychology, we had um, 107 students. So we had 66% um, qualifying scores. European history, 59%, government and politics, 25%, English literature, 58%, English language, 71%, Spanish language, 100%, physics C, 100%, physics B, 33%, biology, 64%, chemistry, 62%, environmental science, 31%, calculus BC, 96%, calculus AB, 95%, Statistics, 42%. Studio art, 100%. So those are our. And Thanks. for some of the um, subjects, again, for with statistics, for example, that's a little lower, um, some of the students still are kind of making that leap into the AP mm -hmm. and not the honor. So that's something we need to look at. Like the environmental science, for Same example. thing, mm -hmm. it's the same thing, right. So Although um, psychology must have the same breadth of student abilities, because you have an honors Psychology, but it, it's not a it's not a prereq. Students are able to directly enroll into the AP. Yeah, and right. so that's so some of those courses. Right, right, right. And so that's you know we've been talking about um, moving forward. What's, what's our vision for AP? You know mm -hmm. where are we going with this now? Um, right now we actually have um, a couple of students taking French, um, but they're doing it as an independent study because there's only two students. And so um, the faculty are are wonderful about working with students. Um, of, you know, on their time after school and so forth to um, prepare students um, for the, uh, for French, um, for Italian and, and subjects like that because we don't have the numbers to run a whole course. And so teachers work with students independently to do that. We also have VHS and so we have a couple of students um, doing the physics again on virtual high school. So because that's, that's the way we are offering AP physics right now, both B and C and um, you know, the, the C being more for the student who's going to go into engineering, um, and then the, the B, the physics um, B being for a, a not, it's a an, um, student is very, very unlikely a student would be ma majoring in engineering, so they would go with the C for the engineering because it requires the calculus. It's more of that, that math physics. Um, and so moving forward, um, I've been in conversation with the social studies department because World history of the, the number nationally of the students who take world history, it's, it's grown from about 1,700 students in 2002 to about 158,000 students in 2012. So we're starting to look a lot at world history because the no, uh, of the 158,000 students taking it right now, 80% are in the 10th grade. So that's where I really want to see us put some of our energy in terms of looking at 10th grade students and giving them an <coughs> opportunity to be introduced a little bit earlier. As I said before, we have the US history, 26 students, 26 sophomores right now in that class. But that, that's all that we have. And mm -hmm. again, you know, if you look at the um, statistics nationally, US history is mostly juniors, whereas world is mostly sophomores, which makes sense because freshmen will take their introductory course in world and then be ready um, mm -hmm. based on how they do in the ninth grade for the AP level. So that's um, a conversation I've been having with, um, 
the uh, social studies department of upbringing and math forward. Well, I think the new schedule gives you opportunity to pull it down to sophomores as well, mm -hmm. um, and more options. So there are probably more courses that you don't need pre-qualifiers for, but you could push the student, especially a year long. Right. I, would, I would guess that if you took a student survey of the course satisfaction at the end of a year long AP course versus a block AP course, they're going to feel much more satisfied that they've comprehended the language and the in information that's being taught. Absolutely. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens next year. That's, um, a, and that's a great suggestion, and mm -hmm. I think that um, that's something we should seriously consider is, mm -hmm. is um, surveying the students to see, um, to see how they feel about the AP program and um, as relative to when they were taking block um, courses yeah. and so forth. One of the things that we're hearing um, from students, though, because we, ha we did have a number <coughs> early on, some kids, kids pulled back a little bit with AP, and um, one of the, the themes that we're hearing with the students is that they need they need more time. They, they don't have enough time in the day. Whereas they used to have four courses, now they have seven. And if three of them are APs, mm -hmm. our students are scheduled every second of the day. There, there's, there's no um, achievement center places to go to collaborate with other students mm -hmm. on projects or have access to a classroom teacher. Um, so if a group of um, AP chemistry students are working on something, um, it would be ideal to have time in their schedule where they could go to a STEM Achievement Center and have access not only to one another in, in a collaborative learning experience, but a teacher who could help them if they're stuck on a project or a problem or some homework or whatever it might be. <coughs> right now, um, the way our schedule is, students are, they take 42 credits. They, mm -hmm. are, they are scheduled into a class every, um, every period of the day. and so. A, a common theme that I'm hearing from student is students, and it came uh, out in the Metro West Youth Survey, um, was that kids are feeling very stressed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that part of it could be that they're, they're stretching themselves by taking the three AP courses, but they're also a three-season athlete. They work, they have responsibilities at home. They're all in leadership activities and clubs and, and so forth. So I'd like to begin to um, look at how can we support them during the school day um, mm -hmm. to, to get some things done and thereby Making stu empowering students to take that third or fourth AP knowing that they would have an option to go to a humanities achievement or a STEM achievement or um, some type of center where they would have some time during the school day. Um, particularly for th this would be particularly for upperclassmen um, who again are high achievers um, feeling a lot of weight on their shoulders mm -hmm. um, with the seven classes and taking multiple AP mm -hmm. and honors. So something we're, we're starting to talk about. It's all what you used to, too, right? So they haven't been exposed to this class schedule until now. True. So you have students coming in that are first year freshmen. This is all they know. Right. So they're not going to know the difference, whereas your, well, sophomores, juniors, and seniors know what it was like before. So right. it's all in the transition. That's a great point. Yeah. So, um, so it, it, it'll, you know, it'll play out throughout the year. We'll mm -hmm. know more at the end of the year. We'll know where our strengths are. We'll know where our gaps are and, and what we need to do to um, support students' efforts in, in their achievement. I, I'd like to see, ideally for students who are considering competitive college admissions, to really be thinking about uh, one AP in the sophomore year, mm -hmm. two in the junior, and three in the senior. I mean, that's a very common practice um, as far as program of studies for students who are applying to competitive colleges so um, if we can move forward with the, our world history um, and, and get students who are currently in the ninth grade um, considering that course as, an, as their introductory course into the AP program I think um, that would really benefit our students so All right. All right. thank you Karen you're welcome Joe so mm -hmm. a quick question um, so I'm, I'm not familiar with the history but what was the, the program or the relationship that we had with was it Mimsy? Mimsy. 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 right so um, the it's MIMSI refers to the, uh, the Math and Science Initiative. Um, that was a, uh, a program of the Kitty Gates Foundation, and uh, they're um, active in some schools around the state to bring in additional resources into schools to help students um, access advanced placement, um, to really um, consider advancing their program of study um, in a more rigorous pattern, and really pushing kids who kind of are maybe on the fence, who are very capable, but don't always um, enroll in some of the courses that um, 
that would be in their best interest. So one of the things that we um, began through the MIMSI program was the administration of the PSAT to all 10th and 11th grade students, which continues um, mm -hmm. through the generosity of the district. And it's phenomenal because we get um, a score report. Um, and along with the score report com comes an advanced uh, placement potential report. And it tells us uh, for each student who took um, the PSAT, the AP courses that they are likely to achieve in, provided that they have the correct um, seriousness of uh, habits and learning and, and fortitude and wherewithal um, in terms of the commitment to the course. So we will have students who come back, you know, in the 10th grade, let's say, scoring in the 90th percentile in math nationally. That's a student that should be we should be targeting for advanced placement calculus. But then we look at the student's course selection, and it's possible that they're in a, a, a CP geometry. And so you're using data to help kids make better decisions about course selection, along with the classroom teacher's input as far as um, the student's motivation, the student's willingness to commit to the class and, and get the job done. So it's a real collaboration among the, um, the data reports, the classroom teacher and the guidance counselor, to help students who, um, the, who uh, we have that where the data is telling us they're really, really capable students, but they're not pushing themselves to take that next level, the honors level or the AP level. And so we can use this data with the 10th and 11th grade students to help drive the course selection. So we're still leveraging that partnership to some extent, but we're not getting the full benefit of that partnership. No, right. we, no, we no longer participate we in it. The, uh, the teachers union, as per their negotiated right, voted to discontinue that program in the school. I do have a question though on that. So, are there other districts in the area that are still part of that program? Yes. And, and have you engaged with them to find out if the issues that the teachers were having with them last year or did grieve over have improved in the last 12 months? Because I'd like to know if that's something we could revisit. Um, well, the, the districts that, um, that I'm familiar with in the Blackstone Valley have not reported out any issues that the Milford teachers reported out. Okay. So, I'm not sure how, I'm not sure that answers your question or not, whether or not we could revisit the MIMSI. Sure does. Uh, be something we can certainly talk about. I will say that um, one of the things that uh, we used to have through the MIMSI was Saturday study sessions, and um, it, it would, it would be equated to, you know, the Kaplan, um, mm -hmm. ha they had, a lot of kids do AP prep, SAT prep, PSAT prep, all kinds of prep programs. And so what they afforded us were, was the opportunity to have Saturday study sessions for the students in English, Math, and Science. And again, those, those programs are still continuing though. We had Saturday study sessions in Science last month. And so, and we have other teachers talking about wanting to have Saturday study sessions, but in the spring leading up to the exam. A lot of these Saturday stu study sessions, even when MIMSI was here, you know, students are very busy. Uh, it, you know, they have their jobs and they have all kinds of um, commitments. So the attendance was sporadic more in the fall, but once spring rolled around, because the exam is at hand, we had pretty good attendance with Saturday study sessions. So we do have um, that continuing on. And again, um, through the commitment of our teachers, uh, from you, from the district, um, allowing um, the teachers to come in on the weekends and the kids are coming in. And so that, that's great. And I can't, um, I can't say enough about our advanced placement teachers and their commitment to the kids and really um, going around the building and going into the classrooms and really engaging kids and inspiring kids to become a part of the AP program. When we started the AP psychology um, program, uh, Mr. Basha teaches that and it, you know there's, there's well over 100 students in it and, um, and, and it's a wonderful class and that is a great introduction for a lot of the juniors into the AP program. Um, and he, along with all the other teachers, also are constantly adding to the students that it's great to take a social studies as an introductory, but remember that the English, the math, the science, the foreign language is equally important. And so taking an AP Psych, student enrolls in AP Psych and, and feels like I'm in the AP program and that's great, and it is. But we also want our students to take that English, take mm -hmm. that math, take that science, um, because that's very important um, in the um, college and uh, career readiness. Um, the remediation, the report came out recently, 39% of the kids at the college level are being remediated. And, and those remedial courses don't count towards graduation. You have to pay thousands for the course, but it does not count towards graduation. So we certainly want to make sure that our students um, 
aren't needing any kind of remediation and again participating in advanced placement even for the student who, who may get it, not receive a qualifying score may get a two they are still better off for having been in an AP course and having worked at that uh, okay. level of rigor. Thank you. I agree. Yeah. Mike? Carrie, I'd like, I'm, I'm glad to, to hear you mention the, the word stress and that you're aware of the stress level on these children. And it's great to be a high achiever, but you know, I try and tell these children when I see them on the outside, these are the best years of your life. And you just don't know it. And I think we have to be aware it, as a committee, as, as administration, that we we make sure that you know too much doesn't get piled on them, or they try too hard to be these super. You know, you'll get there. Right. You know, take your time. So, if I'd like if you could monitor that and maybe report back to us how it's going, what you're seeing. I will. I will. I'd be happy to do that. And and I, I'd like to come back at some point and talk a little bit more about and I these ideas with the achievement centers and so forth because, you know, in a lot of schools, a student may be able to take 42 credits. But they don't have to schedule 42 credits. Maybe they're going to schedule 39 credits, or maybe they're going to schedule 36 credits. This, they'll still be fully scheduled because an achievement center would be in the schedule. It's a place that you will go and you will do work, and there'll be access to a classroom teacher to support your efforts. But it doesn't have credit. It doesn't have <coughs> a grade. It's not on a transcript. Um, but but I, I would like to begin to, to think about uh, think of ideas like that to help students. And, and for the student that still wants the 42 credits, uh, that's fine. You, the student can still choose to do that. But if a student is feeling that it would be in their best interest to take, pull back a little bit, um, take an achievement center, talks it through with their guidance counselor, and the guidance counselor saying to the student, "Well, yes, I think it's a great idea because you're, you know, you're booked every day from 2:20 until 10 p.m. and you do need a little time during your day to get a few things done." Yeah, so. I, I think when you hear it, you hear it senior week, and then you hear it at the graduations. You know, all you hear is, "Oh," you know, and. You know, maybe we can relieve <coughs> a little bit, bless, bless you, you. Thank you, a little bit of that stress on them and help them get to where they need to get to. Right, you know? while, sti while supporting their efforts. Because it, you know, it's, it's, it's a rare place in society that, um, e even in our work lives, I mean, that you're scheduled every minute of the day. The only time the students aren't scheduled is lunch. And so it's, you know, uh, working with them to, to help them figure out, um, number one, if they need it, because not all students do, but it, right. if it is a student mm -hmm. who, benefit from reducing their stress and, and still be a high achiever I think that would be in their best interest thank you thank you good I think we look forward to hearing more about that then thank you very mm -hmm. much did uh, uh, Carrie yes, you had um, the vending account allocation yes, on here too did you, you want to go over that yes So last year, um, we had approximately $7,000 left over with an allocation of um, $10,000 this year. And um, I'm asking um, for the following um, uh, amounts in, in different areas and under the learning leadership for the student leadership trainings, the freshman orientation extended program um, that goes to the YMCA, the bullying education and the peer mentoring, $5,400. Um, under the student assemblies, uh, we have ver various assemblies that plan throughout the year, um, along with the MCAS breakfast that we provide to the students um, during English, the three days of English, and the um, freshman and senior workshops that occur during the PSAT. The freshman orientation program, um, 2400, oh, pardon me, the student assemblies, 1500, freshman orientation, 2400. The principal's coffee was a new initiative this year. Um, where I invite um, community members, teachers, parents in on a Friday morning um, just to touch base about the great things that are going on in the school and to hear um, about student achievement and um, just talk about the good things that are going on in the school. So um, we have had a principal's coffee and it was, uh, it was actually, it didn't have as many parents as I would um, have hoped, but uh, there's something to build on. But we did have an entire department of teachers come, which was wonderful, um, to come down and talk about what was going on in their department and share that um, with the community. So that was great. Um, the hotel and hospitality program, um, $200, that is just for um, various meetings and, and refreshments for all the guests that we have been bringing in um, to uh, get this program off the ground. $1,000 for the mediation training. $1,400 for our academic decathlon, $550 for the mock trial, um, the $1,500 donation um, from the school council for the after prom, 
600 for the visual arts department for the um, different contests that the students in the art programs participate in, yeah, as well as the National Art Honor Society. 150 for the Spanish Honor Society, um, including their induction ceremony and the graduation cords. The Spanish Exchange Program, $500 um, for the lunches um, for the students in the t-shirts and so forth that the students receive upon arrival. Um, $250 for the Gay Straight Alliance um, for the materials, posters, and supplies. <coughs> $200 for the Culture Club for their meeting incidentals, advertising, and postage. $200 for the Music Honor Society for their um, um, Honor Society, their um, cords and pins for graduation as well. And for the SAD program, $1,200 for the um, SAD campaign awareness. So the request is for s uh, from vending seventeen thousand one hundred and sixty dollars. Yes. Okay. And the other one is for eighty one is for thirteen thousand one fifty eight fifty six. I don't know where the different cords, but you were pretty hmm. close with all of your. Yeah, there were there were, yeah, they were, there were four that were half the number that the mock okay, trial forgive me. To cap on, that uh, that's musical on society, and then there was the fourth one was I forget. Okay. So the total vote would be for the thirteen thousand one fifty eight fifty six excluded in the yeah, and that's the one we have in our packet here. Okay. Does anyone have any questions or no? Oh my God. No questions. Motion from Christine, second from Mike. All in favor? Unanimous in favor. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. Thanks, Always Carrie. a pleasure. Thank Thanks, you. Carrie. Happy Great holidays. Job. Happy holidays. Great Thanks, job. Everybody. Here comes the man with the rolling <laughs> car. <laughs> well, 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 yeah. thinking of it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm thinking of it. I, I like it when we review documents like this. I think it might be a value. I think our largest revolving account is for like fine arts. Maybe we can have Nadine Pomeroy come in and talk about what she's collected and what she's been spending it on for the music department and the theater sure. departments. Um, maybe in a January meeting, that'd be a good thing. I think that's a great suggestion. Yep. Okay, next up we have the report of the superintendent of schools. Okay, uh, Kevin is not setting up for his presentation. He's setting up, uh, he's not going to give a PowerPoint tonight. He's, he's just setting up for, for me to show a, th like a three. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the spirit of Christmas. Uh, uh, but my <laughs> that's Kevin's gift to, no, I, I give him a hard time. Uh, I want to ask for your feedback in a moment um, uh, on, a, on a video production that's been put together by some Milford High School students uh, about the Woodland Project, which is uh, what I want to talk about now on the agenda. There's been some, um, uh, I don't know, if Joe, if you want to lead off with, uh, with, our, with our first, uh, our first the You went to the, the Senior visits, Center? The Milford we did. Senior yeah, Center. I'll let Joe tell you a little bit about the Milford Senior Center tour. Yeah, we, we spent some time at the Senior Center. Um, they had a great turnout for Bingo. Bingo. Um, <laughs> and probably a little over 100 true. people there. Um, but it, it was good. We had an opportunity to show them uh, much of what you're probably going to see in, in a couple of minutes. Um, some good questions. Overall, it seemed very supportive of the project. Um, you know, fortunately, Bob uh, had the forethought to, to bring some instruments and uh, sing some holiday songs. So <laughs> we got everyone in the, in the holiday <laughs> spirit. Got them all warmed <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. uh, but it, it, was, it was a great event. We, and, and also had, had an opportunity to spend some time with Susan Clark and talk a little bit about um, the partnership between the school system and the, and the senior center. So right. um, she's got some really good ideas of ways that, that we can partner together. Um, if we have any students that are looking for any community service time mm -hmm. you know there's always seniors that are looking for someone to shovel out their driveway or um, you know we have the iPads today the seniors uh, struggle with technology if we can send some kids down there to help them with their iPhone or iPad or mm -hmm. whatever it may be that'd be yeah. helpful and obviously That's we great. could um, certainly benefit from the experience and knowledge they have down there as well so I think you know forming a, a stronger partnership there will, will go a long way um, and, and as I mentioned, they were very supportive of the, the Woodland School project, which was great to see. Thank you for being here. Uh, Joe had a glimpse of, um, of managing a, an unruly classroom. <laughs> 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 you try to gain the attention of everybody. Yeah. So you have to imagine the, the room with, ha with half of the room lined up for their bingo cards, uh, 45 minutes ahead of the first number being called. <laughs> Um, and uh, and so we got a microphone for Joe. <laughs> and then at some point we just decided that it's just it's just time to sing songs. Uh, we we gave out. I had Melissa come with me, and I said Melissa uh, get up uh, some some song sheets so they'd have some, they'd have the words to sing these Christmas carols with. And uh, so Melissa was handing out some jingle bells so people could get in the spirit. And 
uh, some of the seniors were asking Melissa for another set of Jingle Bells they could bring it home for their for their family. <laughs> I said, well, these are the school Jingle Bells. <laughs> we have to have these back. <laughs> it was it was really a it was a great it was just a great time. It was it was, it was a lot of awful lot of fun. That's great. Yeah, good um, people. We're 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 beginning this. Uh, this road show on Woodland School, going to PTO council meetings yeah. and things, and, and I, I know you have those dates of the, when you're when you're available, and uh, and I, when I'm available, I'll certainly go to those. Um, what, and the reason I brought the the drawings, you've already seen the drawings that are up on the uh, on the the, the, uh, the display board for the Woodland School um, renderings. I believe you've seen all of those. I'll show you those in a mm -hmm. moment, though. Um, we are traveling with those so that people can. Rather than see a PowerPoint, they can see something that's in their hand. They can go up to it. They can touch it and sort of see the, the design uh, of the school. What I received today was a, um, and I'll pass this around, is the, uh, this is really the schematic design for Woodlands. You can see the, the elevations, the overall layout, and, and there's probably illustrations in here that the committee's not yet seen. Mm -hmm. Again, this just arrives today. So I'll just, I'll just pass that around sure. while, I'm, while I'm talking a bit. You can sort of thumb through that. Um, I lucked out. My meeting got canceled, didn't I? Yeah, the first one. Yeah. The first one. With the, and one get there was a, a PTO at Stacy last night that got canceled because of the concert and yeah. yeah. So there's a few, but there are some coming up in January and February. Um, and I wanted to follow up tonight on some uh, on some action items. Uh, what I think for the next steps and get committee's input on how we move forward with the, with the project. We have to keep the momentum strong now for a special town meeting in February. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. some thoughts that I have around that um, that I'm looking for some feedback on. One of which uh, is the video that I'll show in a moment. Um, also, I, I have a, uh, a media release that was done December 13th that I'll circulate uh, around to you as well, uh, more or less the, the illustrations of the school, of a floor layout, and some of the talking points for you. And I've crafted a letter as well, which my original thought was to canvas the town meeting members with a letter from my office and, and giving and, and some more thought to that. Um, it would seem to me that it'd be better if we can personalize the town meeting members with people who know these people on a personal level, and you could modify the letter mm -hmm. and a card, a note, a phone call, um, and we're not using any taxpayer for postage. It comes right from you, and uh, we easily provide that letter for you, so you sure. have electronically. Or if, again, you could pull right from it, and it's the same language. We're sharing the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there wouldn't, by the way, be a problem. I want to make that clear. I did check with town council. Provided we're just giving this, the, and some of you may already know this, but it was new to me. Provided that we're giving just information to town meeting members. And we're not biased or, you know, promoting for one side or another. Uh, there would no, there would be no conflict of us using taxpayer money to send out a mailing. Nevertheless, I'd rather just eliminate that altogether. We'll do it. Let yeah, it come yeah, from yeah. us and, and make yeah. the personal reach. Sure. And uh, I'll give you an example. I've reached out to um, uh, uh, one one town meeting member um, who is fairly vocal in the community, and uh, I wanted to extend a personal invitation to uh, driving myself to the school. And show him, and I made that reach, and uh, I'm hopeful he'll take me up on the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So what I have here is a spreadsheet that Melissa put together, uh, and the categories are the members of the town meeting, and, and this is a column of particular importance here is the designated contact. And I would just like to ask that, and I put myself out there first to sign up for for some contacts. If you would just uh, look through the list, if there's people that you know personally that you're comfortable talking with about the project, and I'll give you all the talking points you need. Mm -hmm. um, if you just sign your name or put your name or initials, and then I'll have Melissa. Uh, create the sheet and then we'll, we'll um, sort it appropriately so you have your list. We'll provide you with the telephone numbers, email addresses, anything you would need to communicate between now and February. Mm -hmm. um, if you're agreeable to that approach, <coughs> I'll then circulate this as well just to have you fill in. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah okay. sure. So I've been giving a lot of thought to what the best way to communicate that. Um, <coughs> now, so the next phase of that is how do we show the, uh, the overcrowding conditions uh, if we're not able to provide a personal tour, not that we're not willing to offer that, but if the town meeting member is just not able to get there during the day, um, that's the purpose of this video. And I was interested about uh, Patrick. You had uh, talked to me about just some bullet points and maybe some voiceover. Oh no, and I think I think a voiceover is. I mean, I haven't seen this video yet. And I, yeah, and I'll show you in a minute. We, I, mean, I want to get some your feedback on that, but I know you expressed some interest in, in Don about uh, maybe hosting this on the Brain Shark. And so as you watch this, maybe think about um, this. It's a it's a rough draft, if you will. And then we'll give it back to Jeremy and this Jeremy Folster, the video production teacher, and the students. And then we'll make whatever edits and, and we can get it hosted wherever it's appropriate. So it may be that some of these folks would prefer to have a DVD. And we can produce that. And maybe that they would prefer to go on electronically and follow. So whatever you think is the best way to communicate that, that would be an important supplement to the letter rather than just mailing out DVDs that people may not want to watch. So uh, let me just ask Kevin now, if it's OK, I'll just have him show the, the short clip and uh, see it, give feedback. 
Uh, I want to thank while he's doing that. Uh, I wanted to thank Jeremy Folster, who's our video producer. He's just he's just an outstanding uh, member of our team. Um, but to thank Michael Antonellis and uh, uh, Loren Blanchard. Um, Loren and Michael uh, spent a good part of a day at Woodland School capturing um, some video footage. You'll see that it, it won't get the, the clarity won't show up on the screen here, but it is shot in high definition, uh, high definition cameras. Um, and Michael Antonellis largely did all of the editing of this, the text, everything was all done by students, which I just think is terrific for mm -hmm. us yeah. that we have the talent in house to do these kinds of productions. So here it is. It's a little uh, Vince Guaraldi kind of feel for the holidays. So. No, no, yeah. that, was a, that was a nice start there. I like that. It was we didn't do a free production. Nice. No, I guess not. <laughs> so go ahead and uh, right, wait. I don't know if maybe the lights. I don't know. You can see. Okay. Can you see it okay on the camera with the lights on? Okay. Okay, so I'm looking for some, for some feedback. It's the first, awesome. it's so yeah. first pass. <laughs> yeah, Great no, job. I, I like that you um, you present the issue first and then the solution. I, I yeah. liked how you structured that. Thanks. Yeah, we wanted to build the I renderings would, into so it. I have uh, some yeah, I would just a, a couple things that um, I love the fact that it was very real. It definitely kind of puts you at kind of the student's eye view. Um, a couple of the things that is I'm thinking about it and some of the feedback that I've heard from some folks that have concerns over the, the size and the cost. Um, some of the things that I would say that are going to, that were put in there, I think, I think it's important that we highlight that in a lot of cases and in many of the cases, both from what we've heard from Patrick as well as from you and from the folks on the building committee is, is that we put in there as state required. That we put in things like 
you know, we're putting in, we're moving into these classrooms as is dictated by the state. We've got to make sure that we understand we're not building this palace because after all, we have all this money to throw at it. I think the idea of putting it as spacious, as, as a description of spacious, I think we, I think it's, though it's very accurate, but understand that the space is man, but making sure that we're very clear that the space is mandated and, and that it's important for the future of Milford not just because, boy, wouldn't it be great to have an open space. You know, I was looking through some of these things as we're going through, oh, amphitheaters, and I'm, I'm, I'm hearing the voices of some of the more vocal town meeting members that I've already heard that have come to me with concerns over the cost. And things like amphitheaters and spacious and some of those things, they're great descriptive words, but I think we've got to be very careful with saying that, understand we're building this to the specifications that are going to meet the needs of our students, as well as in compliance with what the state is mandating us to do. We're not building it to 100 square feet per student because, you know, it'd be great to build this Taj Mahal. Um, I love the music, Bob. I, I'd prefer voiceover would be my, would be my. We were I just thinking, yeah, yeah, the music we narration. Just, yeah, we can, we can do, um, we can certainly do narration. I just, if we change things out um, with slides and things, that but we could certainly do yep. voiceover, yeah. I would say voiceover versus uh, so nothing, my, nothing. Again, I, I, my I'm personal not a video production guy, so I, I, I yep. don't know. I would say that over. I thought that music, mm -hmm. well, well, I liked it. It was a <laughs> bit distracting Okay. Um, to the message. We want to send home a message and strong. So on every screen, I think you, the point was made. Here's why we need it. And then, oh, beautiful, spacious. I understand some of the um, verbiage might not have been exactly what we need. But I think on every screen, there should be a title that says why we need a new woodland. Down below, <coughs> you know, these are the classroom spaces, our new performance, this is what, you know, you need to, on every part, why we need a new wo woodland. Because we need a new woodland. We need a new elementary school. And if you put that on the top of every screen, people go, why do we need an, and then they're going to look and see the picture, then see the words, and then see what, what we're getting and why we're getting it. I think that, maybe because the music was distracting me. But, okay. you know, I was trying. The kids looked happy. <laughs> the kids looked fine, you know? And we, I think we need to emphasize it. It needs to be a little bit more, this is why we need it. I think Patrick, there's gotta be a way to do both. Pat, Patrick, yeah, Ben, yeah, I, th I think, I'm, I mean, I'm not in video production <coughs> either, but I am in advertising. And I like the production of it. I love the fact that our students did it. Absolutely. I mm -hmm. really do. Um, I don't think that, I, I think that we need a voiceover to adequately portray um, right. the real need that we have for this building yeah. because this is more than it would be nice to have an amphitheater this is we have a building right now that's held together with bailing twine and band-aids and <coughs> and although we're doing an adequate job of servicing our students needs um, this building is not going to be a building that will continue to service our students needs very much longer into the future and, and I think that we are in a very tenuous position if we don't take this opportunity mm -hmm. to truly present the real need that we have for this, this, this school building. Because I think that this is more <coughs> than, you know, yes, we have this funding and the state's willing to pay for half of it and so we should take advantage of it. This is, we have a building that, that, is, that we only with great difficulty get to function as it is needed to function. And, and I, that's why I think that the voiceover is probably the most important part of it. Um, and the images sort of pick up on the information that that voiceover is conveying. And, and I don't think that you have to break up the production. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do yeah, think that we need to, sense. you know, sit down very carefully, comprehensively, decide what each of the points that we need to convey yeah. around the images that we have there, and then uh, write some copy that has, you know, that has substantial gravity in, in portraying the need. I think that's very, very, very important. Would you be able to um, to work with yes. me on that? Uh, yes. Maybe after, after the holidays? Yes. yes. Okay, great. John? Yeah, and if I could add, um, when I went on my tour last year of Woodland, the, the things that really jumped out at me were the janitor's closet that was converted into a classroom, the stage area and the cafeteria that was blocked off to become a classroom, that one place where they have like the different steps that they're using oh as yeah. a classroom space. <coughs> there were, you know, the fact that we have pods attached to the building mm -hmm. to accommodate the space, you know, the, the, the yeah. needs of the school yeah, currently. 
No, those things didn't jump out to me in the video. Right. But when I got the tour, those were the things that really stuck out to me. Like, wow, well, this is a really bad how, situation. How, how about yeah. someone saying in a voice, when the students are in their rooms after, when the students are into their rooms, this hallway becomes a classroom. Right. Yeah. You know, I think people need to understand well, it's pointing that stuff out like that is happening. It's, it's, I think to Patrick's point of, it's, you know, I think the, the facilities, and I think we've done, an, to Patrick's point, an adequate job of holding this together, but it is being held together with, with you know, scotch tape and band-aids at this point. And I think highlighting the band-aids and the scotch tape, because I think we d the, the faculty and the team does such a great job of making it work for them at this time. Uh, but I, 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 I would be remiss, in, and I think we are missing an op I, I think we're gonna miss the opportunity. We run the risk of missing the opportunity of taking advantage of the state's of, of our position with the state and their reimbursement rate of, this is not a, well, no for now and maybe we'll try again next year. If this is a no, it is a no ongoing for a very, very long time. Decades, not months. Well, I think there's, there's two things that Bob and I have spoken about this. This is important, you know, the presentation of the schools, but the other message that we have to get clearly out to town is the message about the taxes. Right. Is everybody mm -hmm. I speak to, mm -hmm. you know, you're impacting my taxes. My, what are my taxes going to be next year? There's 6,200 this year. We've got to get the message out to the townspeople that it directly is not going to affect yeah. their tax bills. There's you no know. override. There's right. no debt that's exclusion. A, that's a, stuff that's a the major table. hurdle. Right. When they're going up those stairs into town hall that night, yeah. trust me, those town meeting members are gonna have had hundreds of phone calls from their neighbors saying, be careful because our taxes are going, and we got to get that message out way before. Well, and they've been listening to every area community town, Franklin, right, uh, Menden, Upton, all these towns. Every time they built a new school, it's been Prop Two and a Half override and debt exclusions, right. and Prop Two and a Half override and debt exclusions, and then not just the year they built the school, but for years afterwards. And we've got to make sure that we're very clear on that. To Mike's point of, this has been ten years in the making. We've been working and saving for this, and do, and been making very prudent and very important financial decisions, in some cases very challenging financial decisions, even knowing we have a big savings account sitting there to say, you know what, we're still going to tighten the belt this year because we've got a longer term project for the greater good that we've got to make sure we're saving for. A lot of people sacrificed <coughs> for a lot of years to make sure that we're able to get this done for the students in Milford. And so yeah. maybe on the voiceover it could be other individuals in the community. So it's not just one voice, but perhaps you have somebody from the finance committee explaining the impact. Maybe you have a selectman talking about, you know, the impact that this will have on the future of the town and those types of things. It doesn't have to be one person. And, you know, I, w I would really suggest that you bring in, you know, well-known individuals in the town um, with experience, you know, and, and allow them to, to articulate the message out to everyone. I think Aldo Jakey would be a good person that mm -hmm. we could get to maybe lend some time to it. Uh, I think Bob would be a good person. I'd certainly volunteer my voice if that was necessary. But I think you're right, Don. I think that people need to realize that this project isn't about, you know, one school committee. This isn't about one school building. This is about how our community, mm -hmm. you know, needs to support the next generation and how we need to make this a place where people want to come back and raise their families and, yeah. and, and, and have children and, and having mm -hmm. a school department that now we're ranked, what, 53rd in the state amongst um, public schools, I think, is, is where we were ranked. And it's because of the facilities that we have to be able to take care of our students and this is this is a hugely important part of it and to mike's point and to scott's point as well if you speak to members of the the finance committee past and present they've known that this building has been the thousand pound gorilla in the room for 10 years now it is right now you know, so sure. this is this is we've been planning for this building and so it's not new. this is not new stuff how many years have you did you submit the, the to the uh, seven, seven yeah. years. Yeah, so it's not seven a new, new, this is something yeah. the town has, as it usually mm -hmm. does, plans for very wisely. Mm -hmm. I'd go as far as, Do to Don's point, to even using some of the children in the, in the voiceover. I was, I was thinking you the same know, thing. Yeah. Yeah. The, the ones that are up in that yeah. little atrium area and the kids are walking by and they're trying to study, you know, have a, a child's voice saying what it's like to be sitting there when that's, when that's happening. Mm -hmm. And don't yeah. script it. Ask them, what's it like? Yeah. You know, what's it like sitting in this hallway learning? Yeah. Right. Learning uh, reading. <laughs> you know, I mean, and they'll tell you. Kids are great. They're very candid. Yeah. Yeah. Get a whole TV series. Great feedback. <laughs> Excellent. I think the foundation's all there. I think there's such yeah. huge potential yeah. in in what is here 
and the mechanism. I think it's it's huge. I think it just needs to be tweaked to make. Oh yeah, it absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Want to get a yeah this pass. isn't a revamp. Yeah. This is a no, good. No. This yeah. is yeah, to Christine's point. Great foundation. Yeah, this is all good stuff. It's not that. Oh, music. no, no. This, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. this, is, this is just what I had hoped. For. I, I didn't okay, honestly. I was hoping we wouldn't say that's great. Let's let it go. I knew there'd be yeah. feedback. But I wanted to get all the input that I could on that before another to a second draft of it. Um, and we're starting to run short yeah. on time. Well, 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 that's what I'm saying. We'll, we'll that's what I was going to say, too. Year. A lot yeah. of great suggestions, but the timeliness, obviously. Yeah, I don't think there's anything here that's a, a major. Right. We could, I mean, I think that with working with Jeremy on this and, and just be getting people in and, and lining up a day for them to, or, or some time to record the voiceovers. But I don't see us oh, thinking yeah. more than a period of a week after we come back from the holidays. In conjunction with the letter, Right. The text that can be sent with it as well can exactly. supplement some of this additional information, I would think, too. I mean, I haven't had a chance to look yeah, at so that. Yeah, so let me, let, me, so let me circulate that to you. So this is one, two, three, four, five on the Excel. Yeah. And, and while you're doing that, in full disclosure, uh, I did offer use of um, my personal license. Of, I, I work for a marketing software company. So full disclosure, I did tell Bob that at absolutely no cost, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'd be more than glad to set him up with access to the software, which enables you to take PowerPoints, video clips, pictures, do your voiceover, and not only that, it eliminates the bandwidth issues of such as a video that you could email out to everyone oh, nice. and uh, make it easy. And it also has tracking capabilities so you can see who's watched it, when, and how often, mm -hmm. those types of things. So Service. that's great. Yeah. Um, so what I'm handing out to you, I mentioned it earlier, one is the um, is the media release on the Woodland Project that's coming around. And, you know, you'll read through that. Um, Patrick, this will obviously be very familiar to you from all the school building meetings that we've had together. Um, but you can certainly pull from that. The other is just a copy of a letter um, that I circulated to um, the chairman and the vice chairman of the of the, uh, of the working group of the, uh, rather the school building committee, uh, Albert Shakey, Jonathan Bruce, uh, along with uh, Christine De Palma, who's our our, our representative from JLA. And again, you can modify this, but more or less this is the information you could work with. Um, as you compose your own letter, we'll certainly send this to you electronically uh, to get the word out. So the last piece of that that I really need your help with is to complete, uh, to the extent that we can, this grid. Um, there are a couple hundred names on here. I've signed myself up for about 30 contacts. Um, because time is at a premium, and I'm gonna circulate it tonight, if you just put your initials on as many people as you Name you know, somebody you want to reach out to personally, we'll follow up with you with all the details. If you happen to know their email address or something like that or, or the phone number, just put a check in that box I'll, so I'll know that you have that already. Um, otherwise, we're having to look them up. For, for whatever reasons, much to my surprise, I thought the town um, clerk's office, no discredit to them, but they have basically all the precincts and all this contact information readily available, and it's not the case. They have the names of everyone in the precincts. But the information, email addresses, all of that is, is not there. No phone numbers. We don't have that in the database. So we had to, we're looking to build this. So I'll just going to circulate that as we go on with the rest of the agenda. If you just go through, and I'll start with the chairman and um, pick people that you know and feel comfortable talking to. We'll start from there. Okay. Are there any other questions uh, about the Woodland Project? I, uh, or anything I can update you on tonight? I don't know where we left off with the last meeting with this, but really, the where we are in this process is going to uh, to town meeting. Uh, in February for a vote, so that's the next push. So I, um, I don't know if you had an opportunity to look at some of those slides. I, I, I did. Together, I think a couple of things were off, but Christine's going to yeah. Okay. But, but overall, excellent. I want and I'll forward that up to the committee as well for bullet points and then for the talking points for different the various meetings. Yeah, and that's because I think that might give us a good framework. And then if you guys could just give some feedback and maybe add a couple more bullets, it might give him the information he needs to complete the the video. Joe put together a, a bullet. Uh, five or six slide uh, PowerPoint that just talks about some of the, the highlights that we will probably pull from here. That will be useful for you as well. I'm just verifying some of the uh, information with um, with Christine De Palma around some of the, the you know, the, the, the benefits, uh, so to speak, just to make sure everything's accurate, the numbers, uh, and so forth. So once I have that vetted, which should be by tomorrow morning, okay. and I'll get that up to the committee as well. And anybody, uh, after this list is complete, Bob, I'll, I'll take the remainder of the list as the member of the school building committee school committee once everyone's had an opportunity to take that mm -hmm. whoever's left over okay yeah. I'll take it. yeah great because I want I want everyone to get it from one of us I don't yeah. want yeah. yeah yeah okay and uh, I, I did speak to for a while and Bob uh, certainly you, you can be welcome to take some too of course oh yeah and, and if there's people and I, I just said it for people that I that I know uh, if there are if there are people on there that you are comfortable talking to just cross my name off and put your name there I wanted to just lend some support to that but 
if you're somebody you know, hey, this is a good friend of mine, I'll take care of it. Just cross my name off and put your name there. I also reached out to John Fernandes uh, and Bill Buckley, uh, who are the co-chairs of the Long, Long Range Educational Planning Group. Mm -hmm. And you'll see those names are in that group as well. And uh, John and I spoke, and he'll, there's people that he'll speak with as well. And good. his name is in there. So we're trying to really hit this thing strategically and, uh, and do it correctly and, and, and with good information. So people come to the town meeting uh, fully informed, whatever, whatever their position may be on the school building, they'll at least have all the information that is available to them. Right. Right. Well, we want them to have that. Yeah. Any other feedback or thoughts or input? Okay, so we'll, we'll come back and revisit this again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Help. Yes. Uh, next up, we have the report of the Assistant Superintendent for Business and Human Resources. Kathy? Uh, yes. For the Commission's approval this evening, I have um, six warrants. The first warrant is in the amount of $14,576.87. Uh, motion from Pat, second from Don. All in favor? Unanimous in favor. The second warrant is in the amount of $33,515.78. Motion from Christine, second from Joe. All in favor? Unanimous in favor. The third warrant is in the amount of $414,919.91. Motion from Scott, second from Mike, all in favor? Unanimous in favor? The fourth warrant is in the amount of $322,185.79. Motion from Don, second from Scott, all in favor? Unanimous in favor? The fifth warrant is in the amount of $337,742.17. Motion from Joe, second from Christine, all in favor? Unanimous in favor. The last war warrant is in the amount of $30,946.94. Motion from Pat, second from Mike, all in favor? Unanimous in favor. The latest budget update is available for the committee this evening. There is one note that I'd like to make. Um, over the last few months, we have um, realized that our homeless transportation numbers have doubled since the start of the school year. So it does become, in terms of the school committee's budget, it's a burden. It's going into the red, so we have to follow that deficit. However, uh, there is a new requirement and mandate that the state will, um, at the end of the school year, uh, reimburse the town. So we're, Lenny and I are working very closely, following the numbers, making sure that we uh, document all of our expenses for the homeless transportation so that we can recoup whatever um, s funds the state will offer us at the end of the school year. Mm -hmm. But they have doubled. And the committee also has um, a list of the latest hires and appointments from our previous meeting for your review. And that's all that I have this evening, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Yeah, in, in <coughs> speaking of budget, um, it is that time of year. I know Kathy, Bob, and myself have a meeting with the Finance Committee uh, and Scott um, on January 15th, I believe. Um, and I know Melissa's circulating, Melissa Bullock circulating some messages to all of us so we can try and schedule our, our, our meeting ourselves. So if you haven't gotten back to her yet, that would be great. It'd be good to have everybody there. So let her know your availability and we'll, we'll get that on the books for January. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, next up, we have the report of the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum, Instruction and Assessment, Kevin. Great, good evening, everyone. Um, I just have two very quick updates for you. Um, first, I just want to update you on um, what the curriculum team has been working on. And we were able to meet this past Wednesday. A number of topics were discussed, including the English Language Learners Program and changes that are occurring at the state and the federal level related to service delivery, assessment, and um, educator training. Our ELL director, Jennifer Lancaster, did an outstanding job presenting the changes, key issues and challenges relating to our ELL programs based on these shifts taking place at the at the state and national levels. And I, and I think she's going to come to a future meeting and, and kind of give an update on, on some of those changes in a little more detail, because a lot is going on with the, with the ELL program. We also looked at uh, the Common Core and some of the debate happening around the new national standards across the country. Um, 
it's, it's very interesting that some traditionally conservative and liberal groups are joining in opposition to these programs for some very different reasons. And um, some of these stories are being picked up by the media. I wanted to give the, um, the curriculum team leaders kind of a, a context of the debate that's going on nationally about the kind of the rollout of the Common Core. Uh, following that, Marilyn Gilman, the English language arts team, uh, curriculum team leader at the middle school level, did a presentation on writing assessment and feedback using the six traits of writing framework. All of the curriculum team leaders were able to look at samples of student work and discuss the writing and their views on assessment. Under the Common Core, every teacher is a teacher of literacy and reading and writing skills. This is particularly important as we examine the types of writing we are asking students to engage in at each level and the complexity of text students are reading and the type of questions we are asking students to wrestle with related to what they are reading and how they are responding in writing. And finally, the curriculum team continues to work on identifying and developing district determined measures as the next phase of the new educator evaluation model, develop curriculum and assessments as part of the new Common Core rollout and in preparation of the new park assessment, and continue to develop the RTI or response to intervention model. Additionally, each school has implemented functioning data teams that are looking at assessments and making recommendations to improve practice. So these are all up and running um, throughout the district. So that's what the, the curriculum team has been working on. The second thing I want to update you is in your packets, I um, Kevin, actually, can I oh, ask sure. a question sure. before we move on? So <coughs> in, in your opinion, uh, with Common Core, Park Assessment, RTI, New Teacher Evaluation, um, how do you feel our staff are coping right now with these myriad initiatives that they have to deal with, frankly, um, over the course of this year? Yeah, I, I don't think this is a unique problem to Milford. I think no, it's happening, I think so. yeah. happening all over the country. I think uh, teachers in general are feeling that it's a lot of new things at once. Um, and it's really not slowing down. And I, I made the comment that somebody made a comment during the meeting, and I said, you know, the train's going to keep rolling down the track. You know, we've got to kind of move forward with it. And somebody made the comment, and I forget which, which one of our curriculum team leaders said, we actually have multiple trains running on multiple tracks that are, that are all going. So I think the teachers are definitely feeling it. I'm hearing from other districts as well that, uh, you know, people are feeling the pressure of the new ed evaluation model because right. that's completely new, and it's really a complete paradigm shift in education. The Common Core standards, um, I, I don't think it, they're, they're really new, but the, the types of questions and the level of complexity that's happening all the way down at the kindergarten level through high school is going to be kind of a ramp up for everybody. I think in Massachusetts we're, we're in a better place than some other states um, in the country, but it's still going to be an adjustment to practice, an adjustment to what we're, what we're requiring of students. And um, Carrie Bonick earlier in her presentation talked about the stress level. And I think these Common Core assessments, not only are they stressing our teachers out, I think it's going to have an impact on our students too because we're going to be asking more of them. So in other words, they're being asked to manage it as best they can. and Yeah, and I think they're going in with a very positive attitude. Right. I feel like um, the group as a whole just wants to roll up their sleeves and kind of get to work, which is, from my perspective, fantastic. I think they're looking at it as this is, these are objectives we need to meet, and we're going to do the absolute best that we can to kind of meet these objectives and kind of meet the new program requirements, meet the new Common Core standards, make those adjustments. So the second piece that's, that's kind of related to your question is I, I talked uh, maybe a few meetings ago about kind of where Massachusetts stands. Is, is, is this from that? Is this from PISA? Is that, is that where this, this is actually from? a different piece, but the PISA the PISA numbers are great too. Yeah. The, this is the nation's report card, and basically these are based on reading and math assessments at the fourth and eighth grade, and um, Massachusetts outperformed their peers across the country in reading and math in all f the two grade levels and all four tests. And this has been pretty consistent. We're, we're consistently finishing in first place. There's a couple of states that are close to us, but we generally have a pretty decent gap between the average score and the score in, of, of the average in Massachusetts. Um, it's also interesting, the scores are significantly higher than when these tests were given in 1992, so there's been a big jump. True in Massachusetts, also true across the country. Um, the one interesting piece was the gap between students scoring at the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile has remained nearly constant over this time period as well. So although we're seeing a jump in scores for both groups, the gap between the students scoring at the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile is pretty consistent at the fourth and eighth grade level for reading and math. So we're not seeing a necessarily closing of that gap between students that are maybe struggling a little bit more and students that are, you know, 
kind of grasping the concepts. Um, there, there are gaps in subgroup performance and gender performance on these tests, and it's outlined um, in these reports. And o overall, though, this news is encouraging as we look to kind of generally improve the, the learning outcomes for our students, and also just kind of where we stand in Massachusetts relative on, on, on various measures. I think it puts us in a good place competitively for the world. Again, going to Carrie's discussion about the AP exams, we're competing, when you look at that list of universities, we're not only competing with students in Massachusetts, we're competing with students in the United States. All those universities have a very high percentage of international students coming in. So we're really preparing the students of Milford for kind of comp competition with the rest of the world. And I think we need to keep that perspective as well as wor worry about the stress, but also look at, geez, if these students want to get into some of these more competitive colleges, they're competing with kids in China, kids in India, kids in South America, kids from all over the world. So you kind of have to have a balance of you want to you want to you want to push and take the you know the most rigorous courses available, but you also want to kind of be cognizant that w at what cost are we doing this? I see that Carrie's back with. Oh please! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Peter um, was working diligently on his application to Brown University um, at, at a little bit earlier this evening and um, got a little caught up in the common application and a couple of the essays. So, um, so when I received the email, um, I gave Peter a quick call and I let him know that we're still here and we'd love to have him stop by. So. Peter's here um, with us right now, and Peter, um, what I'd like, oh, excuse me, what I'd like to present to you this evening is your letter of commendation from the National Merit Scholarship Program. Peter um, scored in the top 5% nationally of all the um, PSAT test takers, the 1.5 million uh, students that took the exam in 2012, and um, he has received a letter of commendation from the College Board. So congratulations, Peter. Next, um, Peter is also recognized as um, a College Bo Board Advanced Placement Scholar for his achievement on his advanced placement exams. Um, Peter has successfully completed three um, AP exams last year, all with a score of five. Congratulations, <laughs> Peter. And lastly, um, as I would mentioned earlier, um, Peter uh, was recognized um, as the MIAA Student Athlete of the Month, um, among many, many uh, nominees for that recognition around the state. Um, hundreds of nominations come in, and we are very honored um, and pleased uh, to inform you, Peter, that you are the male MIAA um, Student Athlete of the Month. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity yeah, to come back this Peter, evening. Peter, congratulations. Um, w w we couldn't be more proud. We, we heard so many wonderful things about you <laughs> earlier when you weren't here from from Miss Von Ock as well as Mr. Pigastavo, and uh, you are a shining shining example of, of um, your community and, and your school. And Thank you. yeah, Thank well done. Good Appreciate luck with the application. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we knew you were up to something <laughs> productive. Not guy going. Thank you for coming in, though. Thank yeah. you, Peter. Thank you. Good Thanks, luck, Peter. Peter. Not, not the first time, by the way, Peter's coming to visit with us, and I haven't seen him the last yeah, time. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree Thank more. You very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <coughs> so I'm, I'm good. You good, Kevin? Yep, I'm all set. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a student come in every time if it starts to get a little hairy. <laughs> <laughs> Look what he's done. It's fantastic. He's like a street vendor with his car. He gets his chair all set up. Yeah. And, you know, he'll get ready for January. He'll, 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 <laughs> he'll get ready for January. That's Very good. Look, look forward to it. It's a big presentation. Very good. Thank you. Um, next up, we have new business. Do any members have any new business? Don? Yeah, so when I was up here for the, uh, you know, the, the teacher uh, parent meetings, and I had an opportunity to meet with about five teachers that evening, 
and every one of them uh, had a conversation with me regarding cell phones and the problem that they were having today with kids using cell phones in the school and it's just such a distraction and it's I mean it's getting to a point where they're all struggling and um, you know I guess last year uh, one of our teachers had taken a phone and then it got lost so then it was the responsibility of the district to replace it so unfortunately because of that we kind of have a I don't know, an unwritten policy of not taking the students' phones away from them. So what I, uh, I did send an email to Bob. I explained the conversations that I had with the teachers. I asked if there's anything we can do to look into this problem to support our teachers and to foster a better learning environment for our students so that they're not being disrupted by other students being on their phones during this period. I know it's a real tricky situation because of who owns the phones today, uh, the cost of these phones, and, and what type of solution can we come up with. So Bob did ask Kerry to reach out to other principals in the area, find out what other districts are doing. Uh, so I just wanted to bring that up to the committee. Uh, I'm looking forward to Kerry's uh, feedback on that. But I'm also wanting to explain this to the committee because uh, it was clear to me, and I don't know if you've ever had a chance to talk to any of the teachers about this at the high school. It's a big need. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's something they're asking our help for. So um, if you, in between now and uh, Kerry coming here, if you, if you could just talk to some of the teachers and get their feelings and understand how, how serious this is. Well, I just, I want to go on record. Uh, I, I don't like cell phones in the classroom. I don't like hats on in the building there's a lot of these things these policies that i think that we should be much much tighter on uh people may think that they're draconian but i think that there's an, a level of respect that you show for your fellow classmates and for your teachers when you aren't looking at a phone or wearing a hat in the building so uh, any policy that comes before us that will take a more strict stance and, mm -hmm. um, towards either of those particular items i will absolutely vote for every single time yeah you know, and one thing that i found disturbing was one of the teachers telling me how she's always yelling at the kids to not charge their phones in the classroom. Unacceptable. I'm sorry, oh, that's, that's not. That's unacceptable you know, to absolutely. me. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. we could really use our support. I just don't understand where the disconnect of cell phones goes because at Stacy, they can't come out of their locker. Right. 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 So they just don't. In middle school East, they're not supposed to come out of their locker. I hear there's some creative putting it in the boots and stuff now. Um, but that, <laughs> th now that shouldn't happen either. That it just absolutely should not be tolerated. But then at the high school, why are they out of the locker? Like, right. I, I didn't need to reach my parents we, during class when I was in high school. Because this has been sort of addressed in general. It's been addressed, I, I, and my memory may be failing me, happens a lot, um, that it's been addressed through student handbook. Well, so I, I think, I, I think the said. issue has gotten, we started seeing this four years ago, and it's gotten progressively more slack mm -hmm. in the enforcement of it. Yeah. Where, where there's policies in place, but everybody's afraid to enforce them. And I, I seem to remember an assistant principal coming in and telling us that it's too difficult to have students take their hats off when they're inside the building. And I was just dumbfounded by that, that it's, it's right. too stressful to have a student remove their hat inside the building. And the decision was to not enforce that policy. And they came and they told us about it, you know. And so, I, you know, I don't, I don't understand. We have these policies in place. We just need to enforce them. Yeah. And, and if teachers and if principals are concerned about liability for broken or lost cell phones, then we'll do a disclaimer. We'll contact Jerry Moody, anybody that wants to bring a cell phone, signs a disclaimer when they get their handbook at the end of the year. If it gets lost, stolen, taken by a school administrator, so be it. Because I think we can review, I mean, Christine and I, as the policy subcommittee, can certainly review the policy, but it exists. I mean, there is, it's, it, and to the point of, you know, it's, if, if the rules exist and the, raw, and, and, the, and the policies are in existence, it's got to come back to enforcement and how do we give more legs to it well that's you know we can certainly revisit what that what that policy states but at the same time to Patrick's point of if it's too difficult to enforce the policy is it that it's too complicated of a policy in which case it needs to be rewritten and maybe revisited or is it a concern of of what the consequences could potentially be for that enforcement uh, having uh, a middle school kid, because I will tell you, yeah. to your point, Donnie, 
I have a sister who teaches middle school, I have, and I have a daughter who's in middle school. I, I'm fully aware of and get it and, and hear on a regular basis what the impact of cell phones are in schools. You know, it was interesting. So I, just out of curiosity, I Googled, like, you know, Massachusetts school policies on cell phones. Yeah. And uh, so this is a, you know, real, you know, crazy uh, uh, issue. But it, and it was weird that a lot of things that were coming up were schools allowing phones to be used and, and that they do have a place for learning if used properly. So, so again, I brought it up. My whole goal was have Kerry do some research and then if we could ask the, after that, ask the policy committee to reevaluate re what's in place and see what we can do. But again, I'm just encouraging all of you, if you have a chance to talk to some of the high school teachers and, and get an understanding of, of the current <coughs> situation, I, I think it would go a long way. Yeah, thank, thanks, Donnie. And in fact, I, I had the opportunity to be here last Thursday as well for parent-teacher conference, and I heard a lot of the same as well. And I think you raise a great point. Um, I don't think they have a place out in the classroom um, while a, a, a teacher is, is providing lessons. Um, I think they should be locked up in the lockers. Uh, I, I agree, and I would support any any stronger language or, or or policy against cell phones, you know, being carried around the yeah. school. Yeah, I've heard that colleges are actually marking students absent now, even if they're in the class, because they're actually physically present but mentally absent from the class. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's been one one thing that's been happening in colleges, and I guess they reckon with this as well. But I'll be yeah, we'll we'll, we'll take a look at this. And, you know, it's a, it's a real at problem at the level. Is, as well as in business. It's a huge problem in business. I mean, as a manager, I mean, I spend part of my day just checking people on Facebook. You know, forget the cell phones you have. And, they, and again, they can hide them anywhere you, it's, a, it's just amazing. And, you know, you're just lucky enough, you might want somewhere and you're gong, and you kind of look over, but it's constant all day long. Yeah. You know, almost 400 employees, it's just like, wow, yeah. you know? Yeah, we'll, we'll, it's a good point. We'll look into that. Yeah, we'll fix yeah that's a good one. Take a business show. Yeah. Yep. Keep changing that. Good. Any other members have any new business? Do any members have any old business? Seeing none. Don, oh, I think Don. Don, yeah. Don, oh, Don, Don sorry. Don. I missed you. <laughs> sorry. <there. laughs> uh, my only question was regarding uh, something I believe Scott brought up about, uh, I'm going to say over the summertime, with the adding of the new fields the new field and the future of the new school with woodland with a new gymnasium and fields and everything else like that scott had mentioned something about broadening i don't know like a district-wide athletic um, <coughs> field supervisor and i know you had also mentioned stuff about uh, students uh, at the, you know expanding athletics into the middle school and, and those different types of things. And if I recall, everything was said, you know, why don't we shelve this until we get closer to budget time. So now that we're at budget time, I don't know if there was ever any follow-up or anything like that. So yeah, we have, one it, we have it in the budget proposal for uh, so when we meet in June. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'd actually had an opportunity. I actually, uh, yeah. Bob had actually called me on my four and a half hour ride home in the blizzard the other night. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, uh, and he, we are that you want to talk about a little bit just the I just real quick just, just to to the, it'll come up as part of the, 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 the quick the quick uh, on that is we're looking to um, now we have this woodland school coming is to expand athletics we're looking first to see where we could expand where we actually have the facilities in town to do that and uh, it seems that looking at soccer is the first is the first place and speaking with Richard Costello Kathy and I met with Rich at his budget meeting and um, we're trying to do a better job connecting the club sports to to uh, our school sports you know, freshman JV varsity, mm -hmm. and soccer seems to be one of the big drop-off sports mm -hmm. where, where kids will leave that. Um, then looking probably next at um, at basketball, we had talked about track, which would be really easy to do, uh, except that we're concerned, and Rich brought that up as well about where you would actually run around here, and most of it, although we can do a lot of it on property, uh, ends up being on the streets. And we're not comfortable with kids running from Milford uh, on a, a cross-country. Um, but there is more discussion to be had on that, and there's a budget proposal which will put this idea forward. So we're, we're right there. Okay. Okay. Yep. I, I would say that would be, that would certainly warrant a, you know, 
kind of taking a look at what that pro- program looks like from <coughs> soup to nuts. How yeah, Rich, Rich has costed that out with uh, coaching and any costs. Yeah, how that connects in with our current programs and yep. everything else. Right. Yeah. And then one last different note. <laughs> uh, you know, I got an email from you uh, explaining that um, the secretaries were given frontline yes. uh, security training. So I, I didn't know if you want to just take a minute and t- talk about that. I forget about all those things that are happening here. We have such a busy place. Yeah. Uh, we did, um, with the safety and security with, with Mike and Don, we haven't had a chance to meet together in a while, but, but the work's been still going on in the district. Um, one of the needs that came out of, I think it was a meeting that you guys had had with the secretaries was they wanted to be empowered more being that they're what we call, what I call the front line people, right? When, when someone comes to the door, they're gonna have to make a judgment call as to whether that person's coming in or not in the building. So we wanted to make sure that they felt like they didn't have to shoulder the burdens of the world if they made a decision letting somebody in. And that was really what came back and resonated with me. So we had Jay Brennan come back. He did a training with the secretaries. Uh, we had everybody, we had the, um, uh, the Family Resource Center staff, uh, the high school security staff, uh, all the building um, uh, guidance staff, uh, main secretaries, who have I missed in that group? Central office. S- central office ladies, um, and they had a full uh, two and a half hour session with Jay. They brainstormed, I, I was in the room for the beginning and then I stepped out so they'd have a little bit of latitude to say things that are working or not working well so without the boss being in the room. Yeah. And they could really just <coughs> level with a guy and Jay gave me that feedback and we responded back and a lot of thank yous and people appreciated that time and that's great and we're taking some action on a lot of those items that were brought back so people felt really good and, and, and I think comfortable after they left that meeting so okay. thanks for bringing that up Don I forgot about that I call it frontline frontline uh, training that's great yeah. 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 any other members actually just one thing any updates on the technology task force Yes, uh, Technology Task Force, uh, they finished the, as I mentioned before, World Band was doing the assessment for the Town Hall. We reviewed that report on the tax Task Force. Um, and Martin Montoya, who had been doing, leading the, um, the study on the school department side, um, will have that wrapped up. Uh, I, asked, I, I did ask for it to be wrapped up the first week in January because we've been waiting an awful long time for this. Um, but they're doing a full assessment of, of all of our infrastructure, personnel, programming, soup to nuts. I expect I'll see that uh, right after the holidays, and I'll make that. Of course, as soon as I have it, I'll make it available to the committee. Okay. And then we can decide what, what the personnel recommendations are as part of the budget discussions and what right. we want to yeah. do yeah. in terms of the school department to proceed forward. There is an interest, though, uh, uh, of the town having a, there's been a discussion, uh, anyway, about the town having um, a technology line item for town-wide technology and how this will fit into that will, will be seen. So more to come on that, and I'll forward it to you as soon as I have it available. Okay, that's all we have tonight. There is no executive session. So I have a motion to adjourn from Patrick, second from Mike. All in favor? Unanimous. Motion adjourned. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.